Hello, I'm Natasha Hussain, and this is Newsfeed, your dose of what people are talking about online. Rafat al arir is a professor of literature at the Islamic University of Gaza and the editor of a collection of short stories titled Gaza Writes Back. He joins us now from Gaza. Now, Rafat, it's been a difficult 24 hours for you. Your home was bombed for a while this morning. We couldn't get in touch with you. We were really worried about you. Are you somewhere safe now? Uh, nobody is safe in Gaza, no place is safe, but we're trying to do our best. We are seeing a lot of pleas from people online and from Shanli Urfa and Gaziantep. In the aftermath of the devastating earthquake, social media has proven to be a lifesaver in spreading the news, providing updates and helping survivors in urgent need of assistance. So I'm at Sabiha Gokchen Airport on an aid flight. Now behind me, you can probably see it's filled with volunteers, rescuers. What I've noticed today on this plane is that people have packed rather light in terms of carrying just one backpack onto this plane with the bare necessities. But they are wearing big, thick coats. You see layers, you see gloves. You see these people are ready for the cold weather. It's a record election year, at least 64 countries go to the polls in 2024. That's more than 1 billion people globally voting in elections this year. And alarmingly, we're seeing online manipulation go into hyperdrive. We're seeing AI now at such a sophisticated level, you can barely tell the difference. I've seen clips of Putin, of Biden, and it really, really looks quite real. They're able to dupe and fool people online and potentially skew elections in a massive way. Well, yes, and this technology isn't just available for university academics and uh, researchers. It's available for anyone to use. So many volunteers that we've been talking to this morning. And uh, one of the ones that we were speaking to earlier, now he's running an NGO. His name is Ismail Hilmi. Um, sorry, we, peers were in everyone's way. There's just so much stuff coming in and out of this area. Ismail Hilmi Adiguzel, he runs an NGO and he's helping in the operations today. Ismail, tell us what you've been doing. I'm feeling is very uh, bad uh, things. You went through so much in the past couple of months. You lost 18 family members. You've and lost more. countless friends. And more. I, I can't even imagine what it's been like to go through that. How are you coping now? Uh, till now, I, uh, I'm still, I, I can't process. With these flawed policies, is pro-Israel content also being shadow banned to the same degree as Palestinian content? So the report that we published and the cases that we documented did not focus on content that remained online. This episode of Newsfeed focuses on the Gaza conflict. But through the lens of TRT world correspondent Nizar Sadawi, Nizar has been at the forefront of this channel's coverage from Gaza since October 7th. You had to move from where you were reporting from, from Al Shifa Hospital. So you had moved several times. Several times. Would you say that journalists were being targeted in Gaza? Now, Absolutely. I mean, numbers don't lie. Now, you say that essentially the internet is a reflection of the real world. So is it even worse for women of color online? Who is most vulnerable? Certainly most, mostly women of color. This group of 50 people are headed to Adana. Now, they've been waiting for their flight all day. We are at the military section of the Ataturk airport. This is not the civilian part of the base. The military here also says that more flights like this will be departing in the coming days. But it's quite interesting because there's no scheduled departure time for these sort of flights. It's a as and see sort of approach for when these flights become available, when there's enough supplies. So we were actually waiting here for a couple hours until this flight showed up. So I've had a healthy debate with my colleagues and if celebs are actually the right people to be targeting, now should Blockout actually be targeting politicians? Well, contestants in the AI beauty pageant were judged on three criteria, beauty, tech and clout. Turkey's Saren I was one of the finalists, and we asked her what set her apart from the other contestants. In the content I share with my followers, I highlight that every woman should indeed recognize her own unique beauty. And that's our show. Find our latest stuff on YouTube and do subscribe to our channel. See you soon.